all new on Perfected Life. On the way to recovery, um, after the five hours of surgery, my heart is literally exploded mm. like a balloon. Wow. And I died. Mm. And they called it, they called it, and um, because you know, somebody's heart that is busted inside of you, you have no oxygen, you have no life. Right. I lost all my blood. Mm -hmm. And uh, for some strange reason, a man, the surgeon, who I never met before by the name of Dr. John Lee, mm -hmm. decided that he had an idea. And uh, he turned that gurney around and called all available staff um, to assist him. And uh, he told him he had an idea. He wanted to rebuild my heart. Now I know for a fact okay. that God spoke to Dr. Lee. Okay. And Dr. Lee did what God told him to do. Okay. And um, a, a matter of fact, he admitted that after he uh, came to my family and he told them, he said, after 15 hours, it is as if something supernatural stepped in and took over. Amen. And I was able to do what I've never done before. Amen. In 40 years of surgery, I rebuilt the walls and the valves of her heart. Not share this with anybody that, because mm -hmm. I was just so afraid that they, Think people would, was yes. And, but I, one thing that I did share with my pastor's wife, Treva, because mm -hmm. we're very close, okay. is um, the lights. They, it, they, they, I can tell you that you can hear somebody say peace beyond any understanding. Mm. There's nothing on this earth that you could say, um, well, it's sort of like that, or mm, it reminds me, there is nothing. Okay. You will not experience that kind of peace until you leave this world. I've heard that. I've heard that. And that is the best peace that I've ever felt Amen. in my life. Amen. That is the best peace. Mm -hmm. And. But it was these little lights just flying all around me, you know, so gracefully. Mm -hmm. I mean, just as gracefully as you can ever imagine. Yeah. When, when the nurses would come in, they would just kind of grace themselves back mm -hmm. and let them do what they're going to do. And they came back. and So they would move back. To let. When the, when yeah. the doctors and nurses would mm -hmm, come in. Mm -hmm. And then they would come back. Mm -hmm. They would come back. It was five of them. And they stay, and I was like, I'm, I'm not going to tell anybody about these lights. I'm just not going to do it. <laughs> and uh, mm. the lady that I hadn't seen for four years mm -hmm. just popped up at the hospital, and I felt compelled to tell her. Right. And she said, well, don't you know what them lights are? And I said, no. And she said, well, in the book of Revelation, they call them guardian mm -hmm. angels. Amen, amen, amen. And... Um, I read that, and that what I read in the book of Revelations is exactly describing what was on the side of my bed, gracefully moving, letting people touch me, gracefully just, just something like I've never seen before in my Praise life. Praise the Lord, yes. Praise God. And um, it was so amazing, I yeah. mean, it just, how peaceful and graceful them lights were. Mm. Stay tuned, you don't want to miss this story. Wow, so that is amazing, right? Well, now we have Treva uh, Thompson here. Treva Thompson, right? Yes. And she's gonna share with us what she experienced <coughs> on this awesome move of God in Claudette's life. Treva, now, when you got the call about Claudette, what was the first thing that went through your mind? Well, I don't think you're ever prepared for that call. Okay. 
many people get that call and there's nothing to prepare you for that. We okay. certainly did not expect anything like this to happen and so uh, Claudette's brother Reggie had made the call to us and couldn't tell you what I was doing at the time. I know that we just dropped everything and left. Uh, my heart was was broken. We were devastated. Mm. I had cried and prayed all the way to the hospital mm -hmm. um, that God would let me make it there for her and that she would still be with us. Okay. And um, of course, when we, we got there, her, her family, Reggie met me at the door mm -hmm. and we just embraced and cried and, and, and just, you know, your, your every breath was a prayer, every breath. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so when you got there, because she said that she, she had died, her body was on one side of the room and her, in, well, her heart was on another side. Yes. When, when you got that news, what, what went through you? Take, take us there. When we first arrived at the hospital, we, we did not know what condition. We, we did not know that she had been packed on ice. We did not know what he was doing except that he was going to try to save her. Okay, okay. And, um, and of course, we had been prepared that she's probably not going to make it. This oh. is just, we're going to do what we can. Okay. But, but when these things happen, and a heart rupture has happened in these cases before, but always fatal. Mm -hmm. and, and so uh, when, when the doctor had, had sent word that he was going to try to save her, however, a, as Claudette had shared before, this had never been done before. Okay. You know, this had never been done before. Uh, didn't know at that point that it was going to be 36 hours. 36 hours? 36 hours of surgery. Wow. And, um, and so we just began to pray and, and to call Hallelujah. all the prayer warriors to pray. Yes. Family, church, people were coming um, to be there and, and to pray together. And, mm -hmm. and it was just um, a long prayer meeting. Yes, amen. <laughs> a long amen. prayer meeting. But, but you know, we, we weren't afraid to go boldly to the throne of God and not just ask God to spare her life because we knew and they had said that if she makes it, chances are she's not going to be the same person that we knew that mm -hmm. went into surgery. Mm -hmm. She can be a vegetable. She may never walk again. She may have, you know, major brain damage and so many things. And, and, and of course, first of all, our first concern was that she live. Yes, yes. But, but God says to come <clears throat> boldly to the throne. Yes. We didn't just pray for her to live. We prayed for her to be restored completely. Hallelujah. Completely, and we see that God answered that prayer yes, in, rest, yes. in restoring her completely. Yes, what a miracle! What a miracle Amazing. that that this heart that they did not think would make it a week. Okay, you know, and and I hate to say for the sake of the doctors that they call this an experiment, but if something's never been done before, it's never been done before. Wow! So it was an and, experiment. Well. Basically, for this doctor, for this doctor. Okay. he can't say, "Hey, I've done this, so here's what I can expect." Claudette has a heart none like anyone. Mm. Her heart, even though it was rebuilt, it's not like your heart or my heart. Okay, okay. It's completely different, and and the fact after 36 hours it even started back up, <laughs> um, it, it's just there's so many miracles in this story. Yes, so many miracles in this story. Of, of what God performed and did through not only Dr. Lee, which, which we know, as Claudette shared in your last episode, that, that something supernatural, who can operate for 36 hours? Amen. That something supernatural took over yes. and helped him to do this. But to think that five years later five years later so five years later mm, mm, mm. that heart is still beating strong oh god is good and and it's it is it's just it just gives me cold chills every time i think about it mm. so they said a week and five years later you're here yes. giving your testimony well mm. now they did not tell claudette that 
Oh, okay. I'm we sorry. didn't find that out until <laughs> mm -hmm. probably last here. year. Oh. No, they never told her their expectations of this heart okay. until about last year when, when we were at the doctor and he said, you know, we never, we never expected this heart yeah. to last. Yeah. Not even a week. Not even a week. And, and to find that out four years later, you know, we found that out last year. Um, was still just another we just all we could do is just stand in awe. That's all you can do. I'm sitting yes. here in awe. <laughs> I'm like mouth wide open. I just I the glory and, and his his awesomeness for lack of better words, I can't I can't put into words how amazing this is to me. How how just to see you sitting here, mm -hmm. you know, and, and to know that your heart exploded inside mm -hmm. of you. Mm -hmm. That that's that's got to be I mean, you need to write a book, really. Mm -hmm. I you think we should. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say, yeah. though, that, Sonia, the first opportunity, and, you know, God is going to work where he can be glorified. Amen. And so many times we, we pray for healing, and, and I think it's such in this case that God in his foreknowledge knew that Claudette was going to take this miracle and not hunker down with it all right or you know maybe share here or there but mm -hmm. the first opportunity she was back in church she she won share all right she got up shared her testimony and i will say that except for times when she was just physically unable mm -hmm. she has never declined an opportunity to share and just like with you she met you at the pool, but what did yes. she begin to, to share? To share the, the glory of God. The glory of God in her, her life, exactly. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so, so I know that, that when God heals and wants to be glorified, and he knew in this case that he was going to be glorified. Yes. That he Amen. was going to be glorified in and through her life. And, and, and I will just, just say how wonderfully proud I am mm -hmm. that... Um, she she gives him all the glory. Yes, all the glory. Yes, I, I do. I most definitely give God the glory, and the honor, and the praise for the great thing that He's done in my life, mm. and that He chose me. He used me, even though it has not been an easy road. Trust me, mm. Mm. it mm. has not. Mm -mm. I can only mm. imagine learning to eat and walk and talk again, and it hasn't been an easy road. But to God be the glory. Yes, mm -hmm. glory to God. Because mm -hmm. this has all been done to glorify God. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think that's what we miss yes. um, as people. Mm -hmm. You know, we're here to be servants. Mm -hmm. We're here to do everything to the glory. Uh, we, whether we eat or we mm -hmm. drink, no matter what we do, mm -hmm. all do it all unto the glory of God. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. You know, um, you... Um, you know, you were there. Your your mm -hmm. husband was there, who's mm -hmm. who's, a, who's a pastor, yes. Pastor David. Yes. And um, I find it so amazing how the Holy Spirit, He just unctions you, just pray. Yes. Pray. Yes. Pray. That's our lifeline. Absolutely. You know, and uh, I feel like as as a people, that's 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 what's what's going on right now mm. in the world we need mm. to go back to prayer mm -hmm. absolutely um, and that's what happened for you people came together mm -hmm. yes. and, and went to the father because he wants to heal whether it's our land whether it's our or, body right whether it's our our mental addictions whatever yes. god is a god that wants to heal yes. he wants to restore but but you know, he does his best healing with things that are broken. Yes. And even in our own lives, and, and no one could have been more broken than Claudette yes. as she was. But, but in our own lives, sometimes we have to get to the point that we are completely broken, mm -hmm. whether it's physically mm -hmm. or spiritually or emotionally before God can do his best healing. Mm -hmm. and, and God did such a, a wonderful thing with Claudette because she was so broken. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we had met many years before and, and the brokenness there, and, and I, I would, that, that's a whole nother show yes. of, yeah. of God, God's healing there. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, I just, I want to encourage people that, that God wants to heal, but he wants to be glorified in that. Yes. And yes. as we pray for healing, we need to look for those ways yes. 
that we will give God the glory when the healing comes. Amen. That we won't forget. Amen. That we will never forget what God has done in our lives. You better yes. talk, Trevor. I yes. will say. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. Thank yes, you. Thank absolutely. You. Thank you. You're, you're, you're an amazing woman of God. Yes. I see that all over you. So we have Claudette's daughter, Megan, who's going to be joining us. And we'll get to hear her take on the uh, story, uh, the supernatural experience she had with her mother. So we're welcoming Megan to the set, Claudette's daughter. Megan is going to share with us her experience that uh, or what she went through when her mother experienced um, the uh, surgery and, and the where she died and came back. Uh, Megan, tell us your give us your take on what happened and what what you were going through at that time. Okay, well, really, a lot of the times it leaves me speechless because okay. I'm still like I cannot believe you know that. It was my mom who physically went through this whole experience, which it was definitely a life-changing experience for me and my sisters. Okay. Um, I, when I got the phone call, I was at home because I had moved out of the house at mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. And um, I had knew, you know, earlier that day that she was going in for the simple five-hour surgery. So I felt, you know, there's no need, you know, for me to take off. I'll just go after I get off work. Okay. And I mean, it was like as soon as I got home, showered, as soon as I, you know, got ready to leave out of the house, I got the call that I needed to get there right away. My uncle, you know, he really didn't want to explain too much over the phone, mm -hmm. but when I got to the hospital and I seen the look on his face, I immediately knew that something was wrong and he said, you know, my sisters and I down and explained everything to us and I was just at a loss for words mm -hmm. like how does this happen is this real does someone's heart actually really you know explode and you know just from there the waiting period was excruciating it was just you know we had this one little phone that we could talk to the doctors and you know communicate and maybe every two to three hours, yeah. the phone would ring, and uh -huh. they would say that they're still working. They're still, you know, you really couldn't get too much information f of what was going on. And for the full entire 36 hours, I don't even believe that hmm. me or my sisters left the waiting room. Mm -hmm. So no shower, no sleep. We didn't want to eat. I remember, you know, Treva and Pastor Dave got us food to try to make us eat, you know, but. Mm -hmm. For someone to tell you that there's a chance that your mom, you know, may not make it, there's so much that goes through your head. Like, mm -hmm. first of all, you know, why? You know, they say you're never supposed to question God, but of course, you're mm -hmm. always like, why, you know? And what does this mean for the rest of my life, me and my sisters? And at the time, my younger sister, she, I don't even believe that she was 18 at the time. She was younger than 18 because she hadn't graduated. Right. And she graduated school actually in 2010, so I know that she wasn't 18. And just to see her go through the whole experience, you know, and cry and you try to be strong, but, you know, it, it breaks you. If, if nothing else in life ever brought me to my knees, Hallelujah. that was the experience mm -hmm. there. Hallelujah. because. And then the, the actual time where I got to see her, mm -hmm. I told the lad, I said, that's not my mom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because the anesthesia had her so swollen mm -hmm. and there were tubes everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, neck, she was on a, you know, a ventilator, mm -hmm. a respirator. I mean, just tubes in her nose coming out of her neck and just every type of machine and she was in a pod so there was only certain type of visiting hours and I mean, as soon as you walk in the room, you can't help but to cry. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. can't help it because you're just like, mm -hmm. how is one person going to come back from this? Right. You know, and it, it, I mean, just to see her, just to see how swollen her face and her entire body mm -hmm. and you know, to ask so many questions and they just had to explain everything to you, what, why she looked this way you really couldn't still wrap your mind around it or try to understand it. And when visiting hours were over, you didn't want to leave because you still wanted to be there to try to get more information on, mm -hmm. you know, what is going on. And then I remember the time where they called and said, you know, 
she's breathing on her own, so we're gonna try to take her off okay. of the respirator. So I came, and when she had, she just, the, well, one of the hardest things, let me go back, was the fact that she had woken up and had all of this on and still didn't know what happened to her. Oh. And she would try to talk and ask what happened and try to write, but you know, we couldn't explain it to her. And oh, wow. almost every day, just one little tear mm. would roll out of her eye because she couldn't understand, oh. you know, what happened. And when she finally came off of the vent, she still couldn't talk because her throat, you know, was so raw from having it for so long. You know, all we could do, she, she would get mad because she could only eat ice. She mm -hmm. didn't want ice, that's all she could eat. And, you know, I, I would say maybe three or four days in, I seen the fight in her, you know. She was just like, you know, I can't do it. I'm gonna start getting up. And of mm -hmm. course, you know, like every person that's in the hospital, they don't wanna be there. So she had her days where she was very mean. You know, very <laughs> rude, you know, but. That's that fighter. That's, the, you, you yeah. know, and the nurses would tell us, well, she's she's been a little, you know, a little mean today, but that's a good <laughs> thing because it's a sign that she's getting stronger, right. you know. Right, yes. And I told God if he brought my mother through this, I would always, you know, give him the glory and the honor and the praise that he is worthy of. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You know, and I can say 100% that it has brought the relationship with me, my mom, and my sister so much closer, mm. so much closer, Thank you me. know. We were, we've always been close, you know, and God has brought us through trials and tribulations and just so much that we have been through mm -hmm. together. My mm -hmm. mama has three girls, so right. just so much that we have been through together, and I believe that every experience is a learning experience, yes. mm -hmm. you know, and I still love her the same, I still respect her the same, and I'm just thankful that God spared her life. Yes. And I always tell my friends to honor your mother because you can wake up one day and she'll be gone. You Amen. Know? The, the 36 hours that I was without my mom was just crazy because I couldn't pick up the phone, I couldn't call her, and just sitting in a waiting room thinking, okay, when the next person that comes through the door is gonna say she didn't make it, you know, just looking mm -hmm. at the door to mm -hmm. see who it is coming or what they're gonna say, you know, and the support system that we had from her church and her pastor and Treva and all of her friends, you know, they just surrounded us and gave us all of the support that we needed. Yeah. And I think for that, I will be forever grateful also. Mm -hmm. Because these are people who also put their life on hold for yes. my mom, you know. Yes. So it, it's just, it, it's just amazing, you know. It, mm -hmm. It's absolutely amazing and I'm so thankful. That actually, I am thankful that God chose her because, mm -hmm. yes. you know, it just brings us to a point yes. where we're inseparable. Well, and it brought you guys closer. You know, yes. God God does things in his own time, in his own way. Mm -hmm. You know, some things in life seem bad, but it's all for God's mm, good, right. all for his glory. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, it's funny that you say, because I was going to ask, did it bring you closer? Yes. And, yes. Um, you know, we all are here for each other, mm -hmm. you know, right? Um, before we close, because we're running out of time, I want uh, you to look into this camera, Claudette, and I want you to tell the, the 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 people of Nashville, you know what what God has put on your heart to mm -hmm. share with them, more so than anything. More so than anything, you would think that this was the greatest miracle that God did in my life, but this is not the greatest miracle that God did in my life. The greatest miracle that God did in my life was Easter Sunday. 10 years ago, when I gave him my life and he gave me his life. Mm. That's the greatest miracle Thank you. Mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. God has done in my life. Mm -hmm. And that is a miracle. Mm -hmm. It's amazing what he does for us, his grace and his mercy he says it's sufficient, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, Treva, um, again, your light, it's, you just, it's just amazing and I'm, I've, I've enjoyed every moment of it, but I would like for you, you said something earlier um, that uh, that we missed and I would like for you to look into that camera and uh, share with Nashville what's on your heart. I would like to say that friend you may be sitting at home today and thinking gee I, I sure wish God could do a miracle in my life but as Claudia said the greatest miracle that can happen for any of us 
is that he brings us from death to life. Now, he does that for all of us who want to bring our ugly sin mm -hmm. and our broken hearts to him. He'll give you a new heart. Yes. That's a miracle he promises to everyone that asks him. And so just let me encourage you today that, that God wants to do a miracle in your life and give you new life, give you a new heart, a new start. He's a God of new beginnings. Whether it's a physical beginning or a spiritual beginning that you may need today, God is ready to do that for you. All you have to do is ask. Now, you guys, um, you're, you're, men, you're a member of Trevis, the church um, where our husband pastors. Yes. If you want, you can share with them where this church is located and they can come <laughs> and meet Jesus. Yes, absolutely. North Point Community Church in Old Hickory, Tennessee. We are directly across the street from the Old Hickory Post Office, 1100 Donaldson Avenue, and our services are at 10 o'clock. And we uh, would love to have anyone who wants to come and, and come as you are. That's Amen. our, because God takes us as we are we take you as you are, All right. and uh, we, would, we would love to have anyone that would love to come. Okay, oh, wonderful, amazing. And uh, Adrian, hey, lovely Megan. Adrian, is there, in, Megan, I'm sorry, <laughs> Adrian is her other daughter, I do apologize. <laughs> Megan, is there anything else you want to share before we wrap it up? We are running out of time here. Um, I just would like to say, you know, it's never too late to get to know God, mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. you know, it, I just feel like, a lot of things that happened in my life, I am so thankful. And I know that there is no way possible that any of these things could be done without the strength of God. Mm -hmm. And some people may say, oh, she's 25. She doesn't know what she's talking about. Trust me, mm -hmm. I have been and seen and done it all at an early age. But okay. I'm glad I'm at the point to where I can you know, pursue and want to know God more okay. and loan for him more. And it's Amen. just, it's an amazing feeling. Okay. You know, every morning I wake up and I just pray and tell God how thankful I am. Okay. So I just feel like people my age, we should get to know God more. All right. So. Well, God blesses the grateful heart. Yes. Right. <laughs> Amen. Ladies, thank you so much for thank coming. Thank you. And we thank you for watching. And we wish that and hope for you a perfected life. Mm. Good night.